I'm Mike, and today, oil, and how eating it kills people, specifically vegans. Whenever a vegan is talking about how they have a lower heart disease risk than people that eat animal products or meat, and they maybe mention the Adventist 2 study, where vegans had a 26% lower risk of getting heart disease than their meat-eating neighbors, or maybe that review on the Epic Oxford study that predicted a 57% lower lifetime risk of getting heart disease for vegans. There's always someone that loves to point out that vegans still get heart disease, and it's true. Vegans are not invincible, but the question is, if vegans are cutting out all the cholesterol and the main source of saturated fats, which is of course animal products, then how do they get heart disease at all? The main culprit appears to be oil, vegetable oils, olive oil, and yes, coconut oil. I'm sorry, I, I wish it didn't have to be this way, but processed foods are processed foods. People have no problem accepting that refined sugars are not a health food, but for some reason, people tend to ignore that oil is a refined fat, it's a refined food, and for those concerned about weight gain, oil has twice as many calories per gram than refined sugar does. But oil is everywhere. People slather it on everything they cook, and it covers virtually all restaurant food. Imagine if you went to a buffet and it was just covered in powdered sugar. Rice and beans at Chipotle, covered in powdered sugar, and then maybe you get a kale salad and it's covered in powdered sugar. Oil is bad for many reasons beyond caloric density. Firstly, oils generally raise LDL or bad cholesterol, which is the main risk factor and our leading cause of death, heart disease. Oil leads to high LDL, and high LDL leads to heart disease, and heart disease leads to the dark side. <clears throat> I mean death. Death, yeah. People that boast oil as being healthy for cholesterol levels are probably misrepresenting studies like this study on the almighty coconut oil. Here is the LDL of people on a butter diet, and here is the LDL of people on a coconut oil diet. As you can see, it looks better. So you can spin it as a healthier alternative. But the reality is they both raise LDL from the participants already dangerously high baseline at the beginning of the study. Coconut oil raised their LDL by 10 points. And from another newer study, a randomized crossover trial, participants baseline was an LDL of 118, which is pretty high. Put them on coconut oil and LDL raised to 127. Again, it's about a 10 point increase. So coconut oil is not gonna give you as much heart disease as butter, but it's still gonna give you some heart disease. And LDL is not the only way that oil causes heart disease. There are other ways, one of which we can illustrate with olive oil. Long have we been told that olive oil is super healthy, that it's the secret of the Mediterranean diet, and so on. But even when researchers go out expecting positive results from this study, contrary to part of our hypothesis, our study found that, well, olive oil impairs artery function after eating it, which is a huge contributor to heart disease. To illustrate how bad olive oil is for artery function, here is Dr. Michael Clapper explaining this study. Uh, he gave them some olive oil, blew a blood pressure cuff uh, for a few minutes, deflated it, and instead of the usual increase in blood flow, there was no increase in blood flow. Olive oil paralyzes the blood vessels from the normal dilation. It's not friendly to arteries. The researchers found that if you eat a salad with your olive oil, it partially blunts the effect, leading them to conclude, quote, Dietary fruits, vegetables, and their products appear to provide some protection against the direct impairment in endothelial function produced by high fat foods, including olive oil. So it was probably the high vegetable consumption in the Mediterranean diet that kept them healthier than other populations, not the olive oil. But it's not just olive oil. From this study, palm oil and soy oil were shown to be similarly detrimental to artery health. And as this next study looked at another factor that can be very dangerous for your cardiovascular system, after eating a high animal fat or oily meal is the activation of what are called coagulation factors, like coagulation factor seven. This clots your blood, which is great if you have a cut and it's in the right place in the right amount, but inside your artery, it can cause a thrombosis or just a blood clot, which is what causes 99% of heart attacks and most of strokes. Here's a chart showing that a high fat meal in general spikes factor seven, well, a low fat meal does not. And here's a breakdown of how different fats affect clouding factor seven based off a table in the study. Here is olive oil and here is butter. They are roughly equivalent and other oils are pretty similar. All of them activate 
coagulation factor 7. But the damage of oil doesn't stop there. Animal fat and also oil can cause lipemia, aka sludge blood. For a full run-in on that and all the studies surrounding it, you should watch my food coma video, but this study was not in that video. Here's a chart showing fat in the blood after eating a low-fat meal. Nothing. But eat butter, olive oil, or sunflower oil, and the three fat-containing meals elicited bell-shaped postprandial changes in, well, fat in the blood. This oily quality of the blood is described as lactescence, kind of like milkiness, and as this study shows, peaks in lactescence coincide with angina attacks, which is a chest pain that is a symptom of coronary artery disease. More specifically from heart.org, quote, angina is chest pain or discomfort caused when your heart muscle doesn't get enough oxygen rich blood. As we know, lipemia certainly lowers the oxygen delivery to your heart, which stresses it. So if you're gonna have a heart attack, it's probably gonna be right there. X marks the spot on that one. But there's no such lactescence or pain with a low fat meal. And oil isn't just bad for heart disease risk, it's also bad for diabetes risk, which brings me to intramyocellular lipids or fat inside your muscle cell. Here is Neil Bernard's explanation of this. Intramyocellular lipid is fat inside your muscle cells, and that is what interferes with insulin's ability to work like a key to signal glucose coming in. Because glucose, glucose is there outside the cell trying to get inside in order to get in, it needs a key, and that key is insulin. Well, when a person has diabetes, their insulin key is not working. What if I get home, and I'm getting up to my front door, and I take my key out of my pocket, and I put it in the front door. Wait a minute, it's not working. And there's nothing wrong with my key, but I look in the lock, and while I was gone, somebody put chewing gum in my lock. It's not that there's chewing gum inside the cell. What there is is fat. Dishing the animal fat definitely helps with this, which is partially why vegans have been recorded to have up to 60 or even 68% lower diabetes rate than those who eat meat. But through this mechanism, oil may be the main driver for diabetes and the vegans that do get it. To summarize, let's go back to LDL and put all these diets into perspective. From the National Institute of Health, here is this sad chart. Their optimal is just less than 100. Yet 45% of the US is less than 100, but they're still probably gonna die from some type of cardiovascular disease, so this chart's definitely not gonna do. Shouldn't true optimal levels be where people essentially don't get heart attacks? This study suggests that 50 to 70 is ideal, and that heart attacks essentially don't happen at levels of 57 or lower. Here is a more realistic chart, which is essentially chance of death by heart disease based on LDL, and 57 or lower is considered heart attack proof. Average person and average vegetarian have an LDL that puts them at a high risk. The average US vegan is essentially optimal, but if you average all the Western vegans, you actually get up to 90, which is medium. And then there is heart attack proof based off the study of 57 or lower. To highlight where on this chart you can be as a vegan who does or doesn't eat oil, we can look to Vegan for the Wins video about his blood test before and after he was a junk food vegan or a whole food vegan. His LDL on a junk food diet was 93, which is optimal if your standards are pretty low, but is still putting you at a pretty good risk. But when he went on a whole food vegan diet- and My LDL, the lowest my doctor's ever seen anybody, is 38. Which is categorically heart attack proof. So in conclusion, you should absolutely ditch the oil if it is at all practical for you. It will definitely make you healthier. And the only reason that you would not want to is if you aren't getting enough calories on a vegan diet, especially if you're used to eating high caloric density animal foods. But you can just replace those with things like nuts, avocados, and seeds, and dodge the oil anyway. But if you're somebody who's transitioned to veganism and you're already overwhelmed by restricting your diet to an extent, then I would say just don't cook with oil. When I stopped cooking with oil back in the day, my skin cleared up quite a bit, so it's definitely beneficial but definitely work toward not eating oil because I have friends that go into the doctor's office that are whole food vegans and the doctor said it's the best LDL, the best blood work they've ever seen in their entire career. So just don't pass up that opportunity. All right, that's it for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and thank you for watching.